Hi, I'm Brian McKenzie, a researcher at Trust Radius and a frequent user of Jupyter Notebooks. I use Jupyter Notebooks all the time for cleaning data and presenting data visualizations with easy to read documentation. In this video, I'll be going through the basics of setting up and using Jupyter Notebooks. I've added timestamps in the description if you want to jump to a specific part. If you want to see more software demos and tutorials, hit the subscribe button below to make sure you never miss a video. A Jupyter Notebook is a web-based application that allows users to create documents with markup text and code that can be run in a document piece by piece. Jupyter is built for data cleaning, visualization, and data presentation. These notebooks support a variety of languages, including R, Ruby, and more, but it was initially built for Python, so that's the most well-supported language by the software. Notebooks are similar to IDEs in that you write code in them, but using notebooks you can make changes to code and see results on the fly, in contrast to an IDE where you would have to run an application to see the results of the code. Additionally, notebooks allow you to include markup language, so you can document your code both through code comments and out-of-line text that is fully customizable in terms of size, color, and more. All in all, Jupyter Notebooks are a great choice when you want to see changes in code output as you edit the code or when you want to present your code to others with thorough and readable documentation. So here's an example of a Jupyter Notebook that I made for data analysis. The reason I used a Jupyter Notebook rather than building this in a traditional IDE or as an application is so that I can run the parts of my script that make visualizations and make changes to them without running the entire code or having to go into a command line I can just run it all right in the browser. Another benefit is that it's easily shareable. I can send this to someone and they can look at it without even having Python installed on their computer. So we look at my first cell, all I did here was import my libraries, the database, and prepare the data for analysis. This is the type of cell that I only need to run once and I never need to run again. So if this were in an application, I would have to run the whole thing every time, including this part of the code. So down here in one of my cells, I create visualizations for the budget, gross income, and profit of movies based on their genre. So I can change these visualizations just by changing the keyword here. And I can do that without running any of the rest of the code. So I haven't recreated this regression plot. I haven't changed my scatter plots. These are still exactly the same. And the computer didn't have to recreate them like it would if we were running an application. Another benefit is that I can keep my code nicely organized with this markdown language. So comments are great for saying what code does, but when you look at this document, it's very easy to tell at a glance what each cell of code does, where it's harder if you have to go in and read the commentary. So those are some of the reasons you might use a Jupyter Notebook rather than coding in an IDE or text editor. Jupyter has two primary methods of installation. One is using command line. You can install Jupyter via a series of pip commands listed on Jupyter's website, which we can find at jupyter.org, where if we go to install, you can see the series of pip or conda commands you have to make to install Jupyter if you want to install it that way. Alternatively, Jupyter Notebooks can also be installed using Anaconda, which will be easier for many users that are less comfortable with the command line, and includes a number of other data science tools such as Spider and RStudio. I'll be going over how to install Jupyter Notebooks using Anaconda. First, head over to anaconda.com and click Get Started. Then select Install Anaconda Individual Edition. Note, Anaconda does offer business versions, so if your organization purchased an Anaconda license already, check to see what your installation process should be with your organization. Afterwards, just go ahead and hit download. Select the installer you want, and then go ahead and open it when it's done. Once you've downloaded the installer and run it, most of the default settings should be fine, so you can just click through the installer until it's finished. Once it's done, you can open the Anaconda Navigator on your computer. Once it's opened, you'll see a variety of data science tools, but the one that's relevant to us is Jupyter Notebook. I already have it installed, so I can just click Launch, but if you didn't have it installed, you would see an Install option like some of these other tools have. Once you have Jupyter Notebook installed, you can launch it by clicking Launch here, and it'll open up in a web browser where you can see all of the documents and folders on your computer. 
So you can make a Jupyter Notebook wherever you want. I'm going to be making the one for this video in the Documents folder. So you can just click New, and from the drop-down, I'm going to select Python 3, but you could select one of the other things if you want to code. When you launch a Jupyter Notebook to start with, you're just going to have this one input section where you can write either Python code or Markdown. To select which one you want to write, you should click the drop-down at the top of the screen and select either Code or Markdown. Notably, using code, you can also run command line scripts, including pip installations, not just Python code. So you can install packages you need to use just like you would in a command line tool. Markdown is what you're gonna to use to create documentation for your code. Anything you type in Markdown can be customized. So we can create a heading like so, and you'll see it's large Markdown language. So this doesn't do anything programmatic. It's just for documenting your code and creating notes. Once we've finished writing, you make a new block by hitting Shift Enter. That brings us down to the next block and ends that code line. I've switched over to this more complete Jupyter Notebook that I've worked in in the past so that I can show you a few of the ways that you can run code cells. You can see that I have my cells divided by the visualizations they're creating or the libraries they're importing. So we can run these cells one at a time by hitting Shift Enter. You can see they go individually. We can run them all at once by going cell run all, run every cell in order. We could run cells and add a new one at the bottom, but we don't need that. So I'm just going to hit cut and get rid of those extraneous cells. We could also run individual cells by just clicking run cell. We could run cells and all above, run cells and all below. We have a number of ways that we can run all of these cells. Running cells individually is one of the most valuable features of Jupyter Notebook. Since in this notebook we have all of our cells divided by the functions they perform and the visualizations they make, each one can be edited individually to recreate their visualizations without running the rest of the script. If I had built this entire script as an application or in an IDE, I would probably have to run the entire script to get new visualizations. So when you're creating complicated scripts, this can be a huge time saver. So in this cell, where you get the budget, gross income, and profit of movies by genre, we can just change the genre text, run the script by hitting Shift Enter, and we get entirely new visualizations. Well, these scripts haven't changed, so they haven't been run again. One thing to be aware of with Jupyter Notebook is that its default behavior is to autosave every so often so that you don't lose progress on your work. You can also manually save by going into File and Save and Checkpoint or hitting Control S, which if I do, you'll see up here, it says Last Checkpoint a few seconds ago. But one of the key things to remember with an autosave is as nice as it is to make sure your work is backed up. If you make a change to your script and it autosaves, you'll lose whatever you had before. So when you're making changes, make sure you are aware of what you had there before so that if you want to go back, you can get it back. Now there is an undo function, so you can go back a couple changes, but if you've made big sweeping changes and Jupyter auto saves over it, you might not be able to get that back if you don't have some other version control method in place, which you can do through GitHub or a number of other sources. So I've gone over the basics of how to write and run code in Jupyter Notebooks, but if you're interested in some of the more advanced features or you just want a text-based refresher of what we've gone over here, you can get that by clicking Help in Jupyter Notebook, where there's tons of documentation listed. So the first two are Notebook Help and Markdown, and Notebook Help gives you several tutorials on how to use a Jupyter Notebook. So if we click Notebook Basics, this gives you a text document that covers a lot of what I've talked about here. So if you're looking for a quick refresher, they have that right in the notebook for you. Alternatively, if you're looking to make your markdown a little more detailed, have a little more customization there, you can click Markdown and go to the basic writing and formatting syntax, and it will show you how to make customizations to your markdown. There's all sorts of options here, so you can largely get your markdown to look however you need it to look. So if you're using a Jupyter Notebook for presentations, this is a good stop to make so you can make sure that all of your text is perfect for presenting what you want to present. So you can see one of the things it said in there was how to change heading side, you just add more hashes. So if we add a second hash, we can see we made our heading a little smaller and we can delete one to get it back to normal size. 
Below the documentation for Notebooks and Markdown, there's also documentation provided for the Python language and several popular Python libraries used for data science, such as Pandas and Matplotlib. Much like the other options, these will open in a new tab and they'll just give you the documentation for whatever these libraries are. So if you're coding something in Jupyter Notebook and you wanna quickly check what a method does or what a keyword it is, you can go into the documentation and take a look very easily. You should now understand enough to install and set up Jupyter Notebooks as well as use them to write and run code. If you still aren't sure you wanna go with Jupyter Notebooks, you can check out other data science tools with verified reviews from real users at trustradius.com. Alternatively, if you do use Jupyter Notebooks, Trust Radius would love to hear your thoughts on the software at the link in the description. If you're interested in more software demos or tutorials, hit the subscribe button to make sure you see our new releases and consider checking out some of our previous videos.